Hello everybody and welcome to my third of three videos on this, the Nikon D3000. And in this video, we're going to cover all of these things that are in the menu. Before we do that, I'm going to show you how to navigate the menu. What you, to get into the menu system, we're going to hit menu and then over here on this side are tabs. These tabs are the playback, shooting, setup, retouch, and recent settings menu tabs. If you have a setting in one of these five tabs that you're curious about, in the video's description there is an index with time-linked indicators that will take you to each of these tabs and that can get you pretty close to where you need to be to figure out the setting you're trying to adjust. To navigate within the menus, the cross pad here will take us through the tabs. To get into the tab items we hit left I'm sorry, we hit right on the cross pad. To get out of this, we hit left. And then to access one of these things, we hit OK. And OK will access, it will also confirm selections. So without further ado, let's start with the delete button in the playback menu. We can delete selected images by a selected date or all photos on the SD card. If we want to delete everything on the SD card, we can do that. I just lost a photo of my shirt and my lamp. Oh well, no big deal. Playback folder. This is current or, oops, all. Okay, so basically the, when you hit the play button right here to play back your images, is the playback going to be just the photos that, were, that are in the D3000 folder or is it going to be the photos in all of the folders. Display mode. This has to do with the data that you see in your playback. So when you play back images, do you want to see the date? Or do you want to see the red, green, blue histogram? Or what about the highlights histogram? Or none. If you want to see these, then you can turn that on. Image review is on or off. And this is whether or not the images display for a moment or two after you have taken them. Rotating tall is whether or not the images you take in portrait orientation automatically rotate to letterbox on the LCD screen when you take the photo. Slideshow plays a slideshow of all the photos on your SD card. Print setting allows you to control printing through the camera. I will tell you that given how old this camera is, uh, you will have much better luck printing straight from your computer to your printer rather than trying to control printing with this camera. And then last one is stop motion movie. Okay, this is an interesting one. If you take a whole series of photos, like let's say for instance, you take a series of 25 photos of your kids scoring a goal at their soccer game. What you do is you select the first photo in that sequence and the last photo in that sequence. And then the computer in the camera will stitch together a video of those photos to make a stop motion video. And that's it for the playback menu. Next up, we're going to talk about the items in the shooting menu. Reset shooting options. We're just going to start with this. We're going to first reset all of the shooting options to their factory default. You don't have to do that unless you've just gotten this camera new. Set picture control. These picture controls affect the way that the colors are used in your images. So it seems like neutral, vivid, monochrome, all of these could be really useful for different settings, honestly. As I said in the first video, your best results from this camera will come from shooting raw and editing in post. Either leave this in standard or neutral. Those are really similar. And then do your editing on your computer in your raw editor, and you'll get much, much better results than any of the color toning that this camera can do. One thing to bear in mind, especially if you're shooting JPEG and not raw, is that any changes you make here can't be undone. So like Vivid, which increases saturation and contrast, it will be much harder to edit those photos on your computer than it would a neutral or a standard. Monochrome, you're not getting that color back. So strong suggestion here is just to leave that in standard or neutral. Image quality, these are your options. JPEG basic, normal, and fine. That's how compressed your JPEG is. Raw or raw plus JPEG. Now, 
raw plus JPEG used to make a lot of sense in earlier versions of Windows back in 09 and, and before. Uh, you, they did not display image preview for raw files. Modern versions of Windows will display an image preview for raw. So there's no reason to use raw plus JPEG that's just going to eat up a bunch of SD card space. But if you use raw, when you pull these into your Windows, and I believe also Mac computers, you can see the image profile and that will save you some SD card space and give you raw files to edit. Image size is only accessible with JPEGs. So if we go down here to JPEG fine, now we can control the file size of the JPEGs. What this is doing is downsampling your JPEGs in the camera. So if you use small, yes, you are going to get a ton more images on your, your SD card, but you're going to be stuck with images that are 1900 by 1200 pixels. You can't enlarge them. So this is again only for JPEG shooters. RAW will always record in the standard large JPEG size, the, the, the full 10.2 megapixels in the sensor. Definitely recommend just shooting in RAW and, and ignoring that menu entirely. White balance, these are your white balance settings. You can use auto or some limited settings based on some different specific uh, set uh, conditions you might be in. Preset manual allows you to manually preset your white balance. So if you're shooting at, let's say, product photos for eBay or whatever, and you want to have a white background and you have a white softbox, you can manually set your white balance here so that all of the, the images are properly balanced for your white box and the lights you have in them. Other than that, auto is generally pretty good. You can use some of these white balance settings in different lighting conditions to create different color casts in your images. And also you can adjust, by the way, the specifics of your white balance. So let's say for instance that you wanted to make all of your photos look like a Michael Bay movie. Let's come over here to amber and so that looks like green, uh, or maybe not all that far up to green, but let's just make everything super orange. And now it's going to look like Michael Bay was let loose in Florida to, to record something. So, but in general, you'll want to just leave this centered and then shoot raw and adjust your white balance settings in post because you'll have way, way, way more control over that on your computer, whether you're using a free or even an inexpensive photo editing software than you will in the camera. ISO sensitivity setting. This is where you can adjust the ISO of the camera. Auto, and then 100 to 1600, I think that's the top. Oh, high one would be uh, 3200, and that's that. With, like I, I think I said in the first video, with cameras this old, really you want to keep it to 100 to 400 to, to get the best image results. Anything above that, and you're going to get some significant digital image noise. And that's as much to do with the age of the sensor as it is to do with the age of the software that's backing it up. Auto sensitivity allows you to turn auto sensitivity on or off, which is where the camera will decide the best ISO setting for you based on uh, the, the light that's coming through the lens. This is one thing that's really important to control to have consistent images across an entire shoot. So generally leaving this to off is a good idea. Max sensitivity. If you're in auto sensitivity, this will allow you to set a governor on how fast the camera can go. So if you do want to keep it to 400 in auto ISO sensitivity, you can limit it to that. Minimum shutter speed, you can also with auto sensitivity set a minimum shutter speed so that your program mode setting, for instance, will not use an ultra long shutter speed with a, an, a low ISO at night. Active D lighting, on or off. This is basically like HDR light. Everything that this setting is gonna do for you, active delighting, you can do better with a raw file in post using a free photo editing software. So this is one you definitely wanna to leave to off because any changes this makes to your file, you can't have undone. And active delighting on cameras this old will tend to introduce noise to your images. Color space are sRGB and Adobe RGB. sRGB is standard RGB. Unless you are super, super into the Adobe ecosystem, leave this set on sRGB because Adobe RGB can cause color, uh, can cause issues for some photo editing software. Noise reduction is off or on. 
this is one that's a good idea to leave to off because any noise reduction that you need done on your images can be done more effectively in any modern photo software than with the camera's algorithms. Release mode. This is where you would adjust the drive mode of your shutter button. Single shot, continuous, self-timer. And self-timer should be... Uh, nope, self-timer is limited to five seconds, it looks like. Remote with self-timer and remote. So th there's no button on the camera that will take you immediately into any one of the into this setting. So if you want to shoot continuous, you have to come into this menu item and shoot continu select continuous. Focus mode, AFA, S, C, and manual. So what this does, AFA is autofocus automatic. It will automatically pick between servo and continuous, which we'll talk about in a second, as needed based on the scene that you're shooting. Single servo will lock onto focus and it will stay there. So this is really good for something like a portrait of a stationary person. Continuous will track movement of an object or person or subject, whatever it is, through your frame. So if you're taking photos of your dog or your kid or at a sporting event, this will allow you to track the motion of your subject as it moves within the frame. Manual focus allows you to manually focus the lens. You can also access that by the manual focus lens switch up here on the lens. Autofocus area mode allows you to pick the way that your autofocus is going to look at your scene to pick the focus location. So, 3D tracking uses 11 points of auto, 11 autofocus points to track a moving object in your scene as it moves toward and away from you. So, for kids or sports or, or pets, this is a really good mo mode. Auto area will pick the best area of the frame for the autofocus to focus on based on what's going on in the scene. Dynamic area picks a smaller area and you can specify where you want to have that area be. So let's say for instance that you are out and you are sitting in the grandstands of a basketball game, okay? And you've got the hoop that your kid or your team are going to be trying to score on over on this side. You can set the autofocus area to this side of the frame and then when your kid or your sports team or whomever starts running into the frame with the basketball, you can activate your autofocus to track that motion in that area instead of worrying about what's over here. Anybody who's chasing that person coming into the frame doesn't matter for this image. You want to focus on the person who's going to go make the slam dunk. So focus, have the area, the dynamic area over here on this side of the frame and it will track them as they make the basket. Single point would be really good for something like a portrait of a person or a picture of a sailboat out in the lake or something like that, where you want to have and control the specific autofocus point that's going to be used to obtain focus. So if you pick single point, let's say that you have it over on the side of your frame and you want to have a portrait of a person from the shoulders up in your frame. If you pick an autofocus point over here and then put it on your subject's eyes, you'll get those in focus and you can then frame a classical portrait photo using your autofocus point. AF Assist is your autofocus assist light that's on the front of the camera, on or off. If you are going to something like a play, let's say, you know, to watch your kids, your kids' school play, you definitely would want to turn that off so that you don't distract the kids when you take a photo of them. Metering modes are matrix, center weighted, and spot. So the way that these three work, matrix looks at the entire scene and then it evaluates what's going on in the scene, the lights, the darks, the, the distance to the subject, and it says the best shutter speed and aperture for this scene based on what I'm seeing is this, and it takes the picture, or tells you what to use to take the picture. Center weighted biases the meter reading towards the center of the frame. So 60 or some odd percent of the meter reading comes from the central portion of the image, an area about like the circle I'm drawing right here. And then the balance comes from outside of it. So let's say that you're you, taking pictures of people, of a, you're doing a portrait shoot, and you're going to have all of your people's faces center framed. Using center weighted will give you a result that takes into account the center framing of your subjects when you take photos. 
Spot metering is highly powerful, and what this does is it uses a central spot to take an entire meter reading. So a good use of this is when you're shooting in manual mode. So what you can do is get to manual mode, select spot meter, and then what you would do is take a meter reading off you what you want in your scene to be the middle tone of the scene. And then you dial in your settings appropriately and use those to take your photos. Built-in flash, this adjusts the way in which your flash works. Is your flash going to automatically use the meter reading in the viewfinder, the, the light that's coming through the lens, to calculate how bright the flash has to be? Or do you want the pop-up flash that's built into the camera to have manual flash power settings? And these are your manual flash power settings. Full power, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and thirty-two, a thirty-second. So let's say, for instance, that you're using the pop-up flash to trigger flashes that are not connected to your camera. You have a couple of strobes off to the side of a portrait shoot, for instance. And you know that if you set this at one-eighth, that the flashes you have set up will see that flash on your pop-up and will fire, but your flash from your camera will not affect your image. You could set that to OK and then use the flash on your camera to control remote flashes. We're back to the top, so we're going to go on to the Setup menu. Setup menu, Reset Setup Options. Now we just did this at the very beginning, but we're going to reset all of the options in the Setup menu anyway. So if you just bought your camera, you can reset the Setup Options and now everything's back to its factory default. Formatting the memory card lets you format the memory card. If you just bought a new memory card, this is a good idea because it will uh, take anything that the camera needs, like folder structures, and put them onto the memory card for you. LCD brightness allows you to control the LCD brightness or auto dim if you are inside and it is uh, much darker inside, this will turn the brightness of the LCD screen down. You can see here that I can turn the brightness down or up on the LCD screen. Info display format. Formats uh, provides you the information, the way that the information on your info screen, that's what we saw in video two, pushing the info button, is displayed. Auto and scene modes, graphic or classic. So we saw graphic already, right? Let's take a look here. That's, this is what graphic looks like. Classic is a slightly different imp implementation and we can pick blue, black, or orange. We're just gonna go with blue. And if we hit the info button, this is what the classic display looks like. So honestly, I tend to think of classic as being a little bit easier to read. The information's presented in a logical and clear manner here. And it, the, the data is a little bit larger, so but personal preference, whether you prefer this look or the other one. Now, if we go into Info Display Format, you can select a different format for your P, A, S, and M modes. You could select both of them classic, but make this one orange. And that way you can tell at a glance by either the display or the color, whether you're in a scene mode or one of the standard for shooting modes. Auto Info Display will have the information display pop up on or off, depending on which mode you are in. Clean image sensor. Clean image sensor now. We can clean the image sensor right now and it will do that for us. Clean at, startup only, shut down only, startup and shut down or never. Preferentially, start up and shut down because that gives you twice as many chances to get dust off of your sensor. If you only do it at startup, then you're going to have to wait until you cycle your camera again to get another cleaning cycle. Whereas with startup and shutdown, next time you cycle your camera, you'll have had an additional cleaning cycle in there. And then uh, shutdown only does shutdown. Any dust on your sensor at startup will be there. Mirror lockup is locks up the mirror. What you do is you select this. When you push the button the first time, the mirror will lock up. When you push the button the second time, you'll take a photo. Video mode, NTSC or PAL, depending on your location. Time zone and date allows you to adjust your time zone and the current date. 
language lets you pick from the languages that are programmed into the camera right here. Image comment allows you to input or attach comments to images. Honestly, um, you, can pull, you can select a specific image and input a comment. A little bit frustrating to do that because you would have to use the input faux keyboard that comes with this camera. <clears throat> it's done with the control pad. There's no actual keyboard that connects to this camera. Auto image rotation is on or off when you have your image playing back. After you take it, do you want your landscape photos to automatically, gosh dang it, I reset the timer, automatically display letterboxed or not. Dust off reference photo will take a reference photo that will allow the camera to identify dust on the sensor. You would need to take it pointed at like a flat white surface. Auto off timer, we're gonna set this to long. That should give us a little bit more time on these menus to see what everything is. But this is basically just how long you want to have the menus and other the other things display for after you turn them on. I think this actually doesn't apply to the menus. I think it just applies to things like the info button. Self-timer delay. This lets you set how long your self-timer is going to be, 2, 5, 10, or 20 seconds. Remote on duration. This is how long the remote control, the, the camera will wait until a remote control is used to take a photo. So if you set this to one minute and you wait one minute and a second with your remote control, the camera's not gonna take the photo. So just however long you think you need it to be. There's no reason not to have it on 15 minutes. It's not like the, the camera's going to drain battery by waiting to have a photo taken. Beep is on or off, whether or not you want your camera to make noise when you use it. Viewfinder options. Viewfinder grid or range finder. So the viewfinder grid will display a grid in your viewfinder so that you can help with framing. The range finder will display some information about the distance to your subject if you feel like you need that. The file numbering sequence, you can use either uh, a sequential numbering. I believe this resets every so often or every day or every folder and you can also manually reset the file numbering here. Buttons, the function button will allow with, this is where you select your function button, by the way, what it's gonna do. Do you switch between self timer and your current shooting mode? Does it scroll through your release modes, bring up your image quality, your ISO sensitivity? These are all the different things that you can turn on and off or scroll through with uh, your with your function button. Just a matter of personal preference and what it is you think you're going to use the most. This right here, when you push the AFL and AEL button, will lock your focus and will lock your exposure settings. That's your aperture and your shutter speed. Which means if you lock focus and exposure when your subject is in bright sun and they move into the shade, you're going to end up with underexposed images. This will lock the exposure settings, but not the focus. So you can continue tracking your subject as they move without adjusting the actual exposure settings. This locks the focus, but not the exposure. With this, focus will be locked, but exposure will not be calculated until the actual photo is taken. And this is AE lock, but you have to hold the button down. And this turns your autofocus on and off. Matter of personal preference and shooting style, which one of these you want to use. Auto exposure lock is on or off with the AEL button. So if you wanted to, you could have the other setting dial in AEL and AFL, and then just when you need to have AEL not be active, you could turn this to off. Little bit of a confusing interface. That's just the hallmark of, you know, 2009 era DSLRs. No memory card. If you don't have a memory card in the camera, do you want it to take photos? Or, or, sorry, not take photos or take photos. If you have this to lock, that's a good way to remind yourself to make sure that you put a memory card in before you go out shooting. Date imprint turns a date imprint on or off for your photo. Honestly, there's no reason to ever turn this on because when you have the date info in your camera, that's saved into the image's exif file. And that is a lot harder to edit than a date stamp on an image. Active folder lets you select the active folder. You can create a new one, rename the current, or delete the current. Firmware version lets you check and see what the firmware is. Now, if there was ever an update past version 1.0 for this camera, 
I could not find it on the Nikon website. It looks like Nikon never hosted it or no longer hosts it for download. I did find some non-Nikon websites that claimed to have the firmware update for this, but they were all blocked by my antivirus, so I strongly recommend not worrying about updating the firmware on this camera. So the retouch menu is gonna give you some control over how your actual images look. I don't have any images on here. Let me take one really quickly. So D-lighting allows you to do dynamic lighting adjustment. Basically, this is like HDR light. One thing about the, the um, retouch menu, and you can see here as we adjust the uh, D-lighting, it doesn't do anything with this silly little sample image. But if you were to play around with this with a real image, there would be some changes. One thing about all of these items in the retouch menu, by the way, any changes you make, I think it saves an alternate copy, but anything you'd make, any changes in here cannot be altered or, or harder to alter in post. Everything you can do in here, you can do better in a modern free photo editing software. GIMP, for instance, is a really good one. If you want to spend a few bucks and get Affinity, it's even more powerful and very good. You don't have to use Adobe. Red eye correction will correct red eyes. Trim will let you crop images. Monochrome will let you turn an image black and white. Filter effects will let you apply various filters, and I'm sure that modern uh, photo editing softwares have many, many more that you can choose from than this camera does. Color balance lets you adjust the color balance in an image you've taken. Small picture will, I believe, reduce the size of it. Image overlay, uh, I believe, allows you to create double exposures. Again, another thing you can do with much greater control in any modern photo editing software. Raw processing, I believe, turns a raw file into a JPEG um, or processes it, takes an NEF file and turns it into a raw file. I forget which. Anyway, at this point, the NEF standard is, is well enough uh, accepted that this is not anything you're going to have to do because Windows now can recognize, and all of the modern photo editing softwares can recognize these old NEF files, no issue. Quick retouch allows some quick retouch based on some presets. Color outline will outline the, the image in a color frame. Miniature effect makes an image look like a miniature image. And stop motion movie is another way to create that stop motion movie. And then the last one here is recent settings. Recent settings is a menu that shows your most recent settings that you've accessed. So if you find yourself accessing the same menu settings over and over and over again, can come here and find them a little bit more quickly. And that is it. That is everything with the Nikon D3000's menu settings. And so I hope that this has done a lot to help you understand the ins and outs of your camera's settings and how they affect and benefit your photography with the Nikon D3000. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next camera manual video. Thank you everyone for watching. If this video was helpful and useful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track and that I'm producing and creating content which is helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding every couple of days and answering whatever questions you have to the best of my ability. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos about how to use cameras photographic techniques or the best practices for the tools of the trade, by all means please subscribe and check that notifications bell to be alerted when new content arrives. If you'd like to support the channel by joining with a membership, there are now membership options for this channel at different tiers that will give you different benefits if you would be interested in that. And one last thing, thank you everyone very much for watching and I'll see you in the next videos. Won't we, Steinbeck? What's that look about?